Good morning, and thank you for joining us live here at Rooted Bible Fellowship Church in the heart of Edgewood, Maryland, where our pastor is Pastor Kevin praise L. Lord, Webster everybody. and our First Lady Sharon Come on, Webster. Praise the Lord, everybody. We're so pleased that you would join this us today in our worship made. experience, Let us rejoice and let's hear a word from our pastor. Everybody glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time? Come on, let's celebrate the Lord. Give the Lord a shout of praise in this place because he's worthy to be praised. Great is the Lord. And he's greatly to be praised. We're going to give him all the glory, honor, and praise today. Yeah. Every praise is to our God. Let's celebrate the Lord this morning. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. Song says, every praise is to our God. Every word of worship. One accord, every praise, every praise is to my God. Come on, if you know it, help us sing. Sing hallelujah yeah. to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise. It's to our God. Come on, y'all say. Every praise. Every praise yeah. It's to our God. Every word of worship is one of four. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Yeah. It's to our God. Come on, say. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Yeah. It's to our God. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Let's take it up. Oh, every praise, every praise is to our God. Every word, every word of worship, Lord, yeah, yeah. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah. Yes, glory, hallelujah, is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing it up one more time. Every praise, every praise, yeah, every word, we want accord. Every praise, every praise. To our, God. to our God, everybody sing hallelujah, hallelujah. yeah, to our God. for he's worthy uh, of all the glory uh, and all the praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. to our God, this is what we say, uh, God my Savior, uh, God, my healer, yeah, yeah. yeah. God, my deliverer, uh, yes, he is. Uh, yes, he is. Everybody sing. God, yeah. Savior, if he's that to you, God, come on and tell the world uh, he's your deliverer. Uh, if he brought you through trials and tribulations, yes, say, he yes, is. he is. Yes, he is. Say it again. God, Lord, we want to tell you. Thank you for being so good. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey. Somebody say, yes, he is. 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 Hey. Yes, it is. He deserves all the glory because he's been so good. He's the God of the universe. Every praise, every praise, every praise. When you wake up in the morning, say every praise. When you lay down at night, say every praise. Tell the world every praise, every praise. Every praise, Lord, we thank you 
Lord, we bless you and we say, it's to our God. Yeah, yeah. Come on, clap your hands, everybody. Lord, we come to worship you in spirit and in truth because you're the God of our salvation. So we bless you. We worship you. We magnify you. We extol you. We exalt you. And we say, God, my Savior. Yeah, 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 yeah. God, my healer. Oh, yes. Every praise. Every praise, every praise, make your heart glad. When you think about his goodness, make your heart glad. When you think about his mercy, every praise, every praise, hey! Every, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Yeah, yeah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, amen. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Every praise is to an awesome God. Every praise is to a mighty God. Every praise is to a compassionate God. Every praise is to a kind God. And so, Lord God, this morning we lift up every praise to the true and living God. Let Rooted Bible Fellowship Church give the Lord a shout of praise this morning. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Every praise unto our God. We give honor and praise to the true and living God. We, true, we're having church this morning. Amen. We thank the Lord for his goodness, his grace, and his mercy. We thank the Lord for his tender kindness towards us. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And so we thank the Lord on this great day of celebration. Sunday's a day of worship. Sunday's a day that we come together corporately and collectively to lift up the name of a wonderful and mighty Savior. Amen. I was thinking this morning, I said, we thank the Lord for a lot of earthly things. We thank the Lord for waking us up. We thank the Lord for starting us on our way. We thank the Lord for blessing us and we thank the Lord for, for just loving us. But sometimes we need to just thank the Lord for the fact that he turned us from idols. Think about it. He turned us from idols to the true and living God that we may serve him. So we should always thank the Lord for all the spiritual blessings that he has bestowed upon our lives. That he has raised us, amen, out of death and has allowed us to walk in the marvelous light. And so we thank the Lord. We got a lot to preach today. I'm excited today. And there's a word from the Lord. Amen. I know we're getting ready to go into August. And I thought that before we go into, I call it the summer months, August. I know July is. Uh, but I want to give you a solid word, a rhema word that's going to encourage you. But at the same time, challenge us as a body of believers. Amen. Amen. I want you to have your seats. Amen. You can have your seats this morning. We thank the Lord. He has been good to us. Amen. And he's making ways for us, even as we speak right now. The parable, the parable of the faithful and unfaithful steward that is in the book of Luke. I don't want you to stand today, even for the, when we get into the word, because I want you to pay attention to what I have to say to you this morning. The parable of the faithful and unfaithful steward that's located in the book of Luke. For those who have your Bibles, I want you to grab that. The 12th chapter, verses 35 through 48. Grab that for me. In the context, the context sets up our preaching topic for today. In this parable, brothers and sisters, Jesus gives a strong warning, a charge to those who are listening, a warning and a charge for those who are present. Watch this. But a warning and a charge extended to us who are listening today. Just don't think that it's just for the disciples and all of those who are around Jesus at that time. 
But the warning and the challenge is for us today. And, and the challenge for us and for them is that we should be watching and to be ready for the Lord's return. Amen? That's important. That we who are the body of Christ should be watching and waiting for the Lord's return. And Jesus, in this, in this context, he shares a striking illustration. He shares a picture. Verses 35 through 48. He shares an illustration that the master, who had gone off to attend a great marriage celebration, and he left behind his servants. Walk with me this morning to look after his household, and to wait for his return. Watch this, catch this. The servants, as they're waiting for the master's return, should be full of joy, and they should be rejoicing for their master's, watch this, privilege that the master has given them in celebrating the marriage supper. They should be waiting for his return. They should be joyful. They should be celebrating. They should be looking after everything while he's gone. Looking after everything that he's put them in charge of with diligence until he returns. Now, Jesus, I'm setting up the context. Now, Jesus is referring to himself. And those who believe in him should also, watch this, be in a state of readiness. We should be ready. He's on his way back. We should have be in a state of readiness, amen? And we should always be prepared. We should always be watching. We should always be waiting for Jesus' return. Watch this. In the text, if you look at the text, because I'm not going to preach that text. It's setting up the text. We should always be fully dressed. Our belts should be tight. Girded up, waiting for his return. Amen? Our lights, lamps should be burning. Amen. And not only that, as we look at this, not only should our lamps be burning, but we should be serving and laboring for the Lord. Now, now please take what Jesus says seriously. Don't brush it off this morning because his return is at hand. Because if you brush it off, watch this. When his return comes, it will take you and I unexpectedly. Now, 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 keep in mind the grammatical structure I'm teaching you this morning. Keep in mind the context of verses 35 through 48. Matter of fact, watch this. Jesus speaks of judgment. That's what he's talking about here. And matter of fact, I put up on the screen in Luke 12, 47, before we look at our preaching text, in Luke 12, 47 and 48, he says, the servant who knows that the, master, the master's will and does not get ready or does not do what the master wants, will be beaten with many blows. I want you to get this. But the one who does not know and does things deserving punishment will be beaten with few blows. Watch this. Look at the judgment. Those who know, more blows. Those who don't know, less blows. Here we go. And from everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. Now, the reason I'm sharing this with you, and I'm going in this direction, because we're going to do an exegetical look, and we need to look at the grammatical structure of the, of the text. And so now, with that in mind, Jesus is dealing with judgment. He's dealing with the fact that he's on his way back, and when he comes back, watch this, he's coming back with judgment in his hand. Amen? I want you to see that this morning. Amen? So as we look at this, and this now opens us up, it leads us to our preaching text. And our preaching text, look in your Bible, will be Luke 12, 49 through 59 this morning. That's our preaching text. Amen? That's our preaching text. And, and, and as we look at our preaching text, I want you to see what the structure's all set up. Watch this. This is the, the Jesus, watch this church, of the Bible. This is Jesus of the scripture. This ain't a, this ain't a man-made Jesus that's speaking here. This ain't a worldly Jesus. This is not a liberal Jesus. But this is the Jesus of the Bible who's speaking right now. And watch this. As we look at this, I want to 
preach from a sermon topic, as we look at Jesus, Jesus does something in these 10 verses. Jesus draws a line. Jesus draws a line. Walk with me. He draws a line, and, and watch this, that forces us to take sides. <laughs> See, what Jesus is doing, he is forcibly drawing a line. If we could say drawing a line in the sand, Jesus, the Son of God, God in the flesh, the Almighty God, the Almighty Savior, is drawing a line in the sand, letting us know he's on his way back. He's drawing a line in the sand, and he's letting us know that you and I must make a choice. You got to make a choice. And if you know what I know and what I believe, you better choose to be on Jesus' side. Let me tell you that right now. All this stuff going on in the world, all this crazy stuff, you better get focused on the king of kings. And the line has been drawn in the sand. Don't get caught up in this critical race theory and all this other stuff. The line has been drawn in the sand, and Jesus says this, I'm on my way back, and you better be on the right side. You better be on the right side. Because I'm on my way back. The master is coming back, and when I come back, watch this. I want to find you ready for my return. Are you walking with me this morning? Amen? Now watch this. As we look at this, and you're in Luke 12, 49, we're going to teach a short message, but we're going to bring up some things that I want you to walk with, and I want those who are at home to walk with. One thing about the church, the church is not designed for entertainment. Because now we're in a world now that the world is trying to dictate that the church be about entertainment, but the church of Jesus Christ is designed to give out truth. We should live our life not on how we feel, what we think, our emotions up and down, but we should base our lives on what Jesus says, what his word says, because now we are people of truth. And so as we look at this, watch this, in the text, Jesus of the scripture tells us something. Our society is trying to promote this world. 2021, this whole nation, this world, is trying to promote a Jesus just of love and forgiveness, which he is. Amen? He is a God of love and forgiveness. But watch this. But we got to catch this. Watch this. But he's also a God of judgment. See, the world's trying to say that Jesus is a God of just love and forgiveness, and that's his whole makeup, this is his whole attribute. But as we look in the text, watch this, Jesus is also a God of judgment. He's a God of judgment. Did you see that? And he's a God of judgment, watch this, over sin. He's a God of judgment over sin. So the Jesus of the Bible we see here is different from what society tries to depict him. Amen? See, society, the world is trying to remove, watch this, rooted, because we have to understand this. Society is trying its best to remove the judgment of God. That's why we fall for every other thing. That's why we accept in every, everything. Amen? Because we're saying that Jesus is just a God of love and forgiveness, which he is, but as we look in the text, we see that he's also a God of judgment. Walk with me today. Amen? Walk with me today. I got a, we got some preacher coming in this, next week. He's going he's gonna to hoop you happy. Amen? But watch this. We got to learn about what does God want from us. Why? Because the line has been drawn. And Jesus is on his way back, church. It's time to wake up. And so as you look at this, watch this, look at the text. We go into the text, watch this. Jesus, Jesus reveals, and he, well, let me say, he, he uncovers. Jesus uncovers three misconceptions that the world is trying to promote. In the text, Jesus is going to reveal, he's going to uncover three misconceptions that the world is trying to promote. And the church got to wake up because the church got to see Jesus of the Bible and not Jesus of society. In the text, watch this, in verses 49, because we picked up from 47 and 48, and in 49, there's a continuous commentary in the grammatical structure. He says here, he says, I have come, watch this, watch what Jesus says, I have come to bring fire on the earth. 
and how I wish it were already kindled. But I have a baptism to undergo. And what constraint I am under until it's completed. Watch this. Listen to Jesus. Do you think that I came to bring peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but division. Let's stop right there. Watch the Jesus of the Bible, rooted. Watch the Jesus of the Bible who's already talking about he's coming back to judge. The Jesus of the Bible, the first misconception that we want to take off the table is that Jesus came to bring peace on the earth. Let's take that off the table. The misconception that this Jesus of society came to bring peace on the earth. No and yes. Watch this. He came to bring peace, but not to the earth. Jesus came to bring peace with God into the hearts of man, not peace on the earth. Jesus says, no, I come to bring peace, but it's not the peace that you're looking at or the world's looking at. I'm bringing peace so that now man in his heart can now have peace with my father. That's the peace that I'm bringing. See, I didn't bring peace on the earth. I bring peace to mankind in their heart. So that now man who has, been, who has been an enemy of God can be reconciled back to God and now they can have the peace of God that leads towards the peace of God. But I didn't come to bring peace on the earth. That's a misconception. Now as I'm talking to you right now, you can see the way of the world, but now I'm showing you the Jesus of the Bible. He says, no, I didn't come to bring peace on the earth. I've come to bring peace. To a person's heart. Huh? Hopefully you got that peace this morning. The peace with God. Look what he says here. Look what he says in Luke. In Luke, as we look at this, he says, For the Son, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which is lost. Did you see that? Jesus says, watch this, I didn't come to bring peace on the earth. See, the peace that we're looking at is free from conflict, but peace is more than just being free from conflict. Peace has in it contentment and fulfillment and destiny and security. And, and watch this. Jesus says, I didn't come to the earth to bring that. But what I did, I came to bring it into the heart of man. Not on the earth. Now I'm going somewhere. Because the misconception is that this Jesus that we serve, watch this, is bringing peace on the earth. And, and watch this. He's talking about his judgment. Now walk with me this morning. As we look at this. He says the misconception is that Jesus came to bring peace on the earth. But Jesus tells us his purpose for coming. It's in the text. Look what he says. He says this in verse 49. Jesus says, I've come to bring fire on the earth. Lord, have mercy. How do we miss this? How does the church miss this? How does folks miss this? Jesus says, no, I'm a God of love. I'm a God of forgiveness. But I've come to bring fire on the earth. Is that in your Bible? Is that in your text? What do you mean, Jesus? He says, I've come to bring fire on the earth. What Jesus is saying here, watch this. If someone in this church right now were to say fire, fire, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. If someone were to jump up and say, cry out fire, it would instantly produce some fear. It would instantly cause us to, 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 to what? get into a great commotion but if someone were to say fire watch this you ain't thinking about pastor webster you ain't thinking about the mushers you ain't thinking about no deacons what you're going to do you're going to get up and you're going to make your way out of the sanctuary what jesus is saying i'm coming back but i'm coming with fire watch this you better be ready watch this and it should cause you to know that i'm coming watch this he tells us his purpose, I've come to bring fire on the earth. Jesus says, I come to bring judgment. Watch this, church. I come to bring judgment. Fire is a symbol of judgment. And, and, and catch this. The judgment that Jesus is talking about, catch this. The fire that he is bringing to the earth, the judgment on the earth, watch this, y'all, is his death on the cross. What Jesus is saying, watch this. You know what I'm bringing to the earth? I'm bringing myself to the earth because the judgment that I'm bringing to the earth is that old rugged cross. 
I'm coming to the earth to bring judgment when I'm hung up on the cross for the sins of the world when watch this and I'm going to partake of the baptism which is to be emerged under the wrath of God for Pastor Webster's sin, Minister Green's sin, Brother Giles' sin, First Lady's sin. He says that's the judgment that I'm bringing to the earth. The cross. The cross is the judgment that this earth has now is going to receive because watch this, it's going to be on the backdrop of the cross of Jesus. You got to walk with me today. He says, I've come, but I come with fire. I'm coming to bring judgment on the earth with fire. And that fire is the cross. Look what Jesus says in the text. He says, I come to bring fire on the earth and I wish it was already, he says, watch this, I wish it was already kindled. You know what Jesus is saying in this humanism? Look, in this human by being a man, but also being God, I wish that the price was already paid. I wish that I've already did what the Lord has called me to do. I wish it was already a done deal, but I'm, watch this, but it hasn't been done yet. I haven't went to the cross yet. I wish I've already went to the cross. Why? Because in my humanism, watch this, I agonize over the cross. I agonize, watch this, being separated from my father. I agonize over the fact that all the sin of the world is going to be poured out on me. And I wish it was already done. Huh? See, that's the judgment that's coming. See, we're getting caught up in all this TV stuff, social media. He says, no, would you better get caught up on the fact that a line has been drawn. <laughs> a line has been drawn. Amen? And you better be on the right side. You better be on the right side. Watch this. And so as we look at this, watch this. The death, Jesus' death on the cross is what brings judgment on the earth. I'm going somewhere this morning. Amen? See, Romans 8 tells us something. In Romans 8, 8, 3, it says this. It says, for what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh for sin. Watch this. To do what? To condemn sin, to judge sin in the flesh. He says, I'm sending my son into the earth. Watch this. To judge, condemn the sin that's in the earth. That's why I'm sending my son. That's the fire that he's talking about I'm bringing. I'm bringing fire when I come. Amen? I'm to judge the sin of the world. But watch this. He also says in John 12, 30, 12, um, John 12, 30 through 32, Jesus says, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. Listen to what he says real quick. Now is the time for judgment. See, the world's trying to get away from judgment. We're trying to hide, we're trying to put our head and hide it in the sand, but judgment's on its way. Judgment's on its way. And watch this, he says, and now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world, talking about the devil, the prince of this world will be driven out. And when I, well, I'm sorry, he says, when the prince of this world has already been judged, amen? The prince of this world has already been judged and, and will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw people to myself. Watch this. He says, guess what? The prince, the little G-O-D of this world, he's already judged. He's already judged. Amen. Ain't no repentance for him. Ain't no, ain't no second chances for him. He's already judged. And I'm bringing judgment. But watch this. Watch what Jesus says. But if I be lifted up. If I, when I'm lifted up on that rugged cross, and if you look to me, the judgment won't fall on you. All the judgment will be on me because I'm going to condemn sin. Y'all walk with me today. See, we got to see Jesus not only as a God of love and a God of forgiveness, but also a God who judges. Y'all walk with me today. Jesus says forcefully, look, I'm drawing a line in the sand. You better choose the side that you want. You better choose what side you're on. You better be on the Lord's side. You won't be on everybody else's side, but you better make sure that you're on Jesus' side. Because as I look over the word of God, watch this, the only side that really matters, <laughs> the only side that means anything is being on Jesus' side. I don't care if you're on the Republican side. I don't care if you're on the Democrat side. I don't care if you're on your mama's side, your daddy's side, your cousin's side. But the side that you better be on, you better be on Jesus' side. 
the line has been drawn. Y'all walk with me today. The line has been drawn, and he says, I come to bring fire on the earth. And I wish it was already done. <laughs> I wish that this cup has already been passed from me. <laughs> but watch this, watch this. As we look at this, and we understand this, 2 Corinthians 5.21 tells us this. It says, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we may become the righteousness of God. He says the baptism, the immersion that I got I to gotta be immersed under the wrath of God. God's going to pour all of his wrath on his son. Watch this. It, it's not man that, that does it, but it's God who does it. God is the one that poured all Watch this, that sin from last night and that sin for 20 years ago and even that sin in the future, all of it is poured on him. All the sins of the world, can you imagine the weight of the world? God the Father poured all of our sin on his only begotten son. That's the baptism that Jesus is talking about. That all of the sin now I got to be immersed under God's wrath. Now I'm going somewhere because the misconception is that Jesus came to bring peace on the earth. No, 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 no. He didn't. He come to bring peace to your heart, but he didn't come to bring peace on this earth, huh? These liberals walking around talking about kumbaya. No, nah, no, nah, we're gonna see something. Watch this. No, we ain't, ain't all gonna get along. Why? Because the line has been drawn. Why? Because the cross is an offense. Huh? The cross is an offense. No, I'm not the offense. You're not the offense. But it's the cross that's the offense. Oh, Lord have mercy. So as we look at this, watch this. Now Jesus draws the line, and guess what? You got to choose. You got to choose. You got to choose what side of the line you're going to be on. Young people, you better listen up. I'm going to tell you right now, you got to choose. Huh? You better choose. Listen up at home. Watch this. Forget all that crazy stuff. You better choose. You better choose. The line has been drawn. Watch this. John 3, 36 says, whoever believes in the Son, listen to this, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. But whoever rejects the Son will not see life. That's real stuff right there. Huh? That's real stuff right there. Amen? For God's wrath, because if you reject the Son, guess what? Judgment is already upon you, and God's wrath remains on you. I don't care if you that grandmother that love your grandkids, and, and you love baking them cookies, and, and you just so sweet. If you have not given your heart to Jesus, the wrath of God is on you. I don't care that I make a lot of money, and, and I treat people good, and I'm a philanthropist, and I give a lot of my money to the poor and unfortunate. If you have not Put your trust in Jesus. The wrath of God is upon you. Well, you don't understand. I'm educated and I got degrees and, and I know all of this. If you have not given your heart to Jesus, the wrath of God is upon you. This ain't no black, white issue. Ha-ha. <laughs> I don't care about all that foolishness. You better make sure that you're on the right side because the line has been drawn. Mm. Are you with me today? Church, you tell me you, I'm with you, Pastor. Watch this. Get this. Get this. Get this. Only got three misconceptions. The first one is that Jesus came to bring peace on the earth. Let's erase that off. He come to bring peace to my heart. And I don't know about you, I'm still dancing to this very day. Because back in 1988, I was far from the peaceful shore. And it was Jesus who met me. And he spoke life to me. And he brought me out. And I got anybody in here that you can dance over the fact that he spoke your name. That's what I get excited over. Because now the judgment I ain't got to worry about the judgment. But watch this. Please get this, saints. This is crucial. Now, this, I had to say all that because now I'm going to get you to a, to a place that you're going to do this. Hmm. 
This is crucial. And what I'm going to share with you, I ain't got two misconceptions. What I'm going to share with you reveals where a lot of chaos in our life come from. Walk with me today. It's going to reveal where a lot of confusion in our life, where a lot of conflict. It's, it's going to reveal where a lot of conflict come from. It's going to reveal it in a minute, amen? I, I like one of the brothers, he, one of the brothers texted me this week, one of the young brothers, amen? And he texted me in a text, one of our young guys, and he, he texted me, Pastor, 1 Peter 4, 12 and 13, amen? Amen? He texted me that. And what it says when you get a chance, it says, don't count it strange because of the fiery trials that you're encountering. That's what the young brother texts me, encouraged my heart. It encouraged my heart that a young man's in the Bible like that, amen? That, that, watch this. Don't count it strange because you are being under fiery trials. That there's unnecessary chaos and confusion in your life. Don't consider it strange that people don't see you like they should see you and you can't be united eye to eye. Don't consider it strange. Why? All because of the name of Christ. And so watch this. The consequences of the fire. Say the fire. That's what Jesus says. He says, I've come to bring fire on the earth. The consequences of the fire in the baptism, which is the cross of Christ. Guess what it does? It causes division. Let me say that again. The consequences of the fire, which is the cross, the cross of Jesus Christ, it causes division. Did you get that? See, Jesus is very specific now in the text. We're going to go back into the text. And, and he's identifying, amen, opposition. He's going to identify opposition. Watch this. He's going to let you know where a lot of the opposition comes from and why it comes. He doesn't want his disciples to be surprised at the opposition. And watch this, brothers and sisters. You got to stop being so surprised because you're under attack all the time. You got to stop being so surprised because what people come against you. Stop being so surprised. It comes with the territory. It comes with the walk. It comes with the call. It comes with the position. It comes because you got your mind made up. For Christ I live and for Christ I die. Stop acting like it's something strange. Huh? See, the second misconception, huh? The second misconception is that everybody is able to live in peace with one another. That's a misconception. The Bible doesn't even say that. <laughs> The Bible says as much as it depends on you, try your best to live at peace with all men. But the Bible doesn't say that, watch this, that we're going to live at peace with everybody. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bible doesn't say that. And it's a misconception. You say, well, how do you know that, Pastor? Well, let's go back to the text. Look what Jesus says. I'm on my way back, and I'm coming to bring fire, which represents the cross. And watch this. And watch what the question he asks. Do you think that I came to bring peace on the earth? Oh, is that what you thought? No, no, no. No, I, I, no, I tell you, but division. In another text, you know what Jesus says? I come, watch this, to bring a sword. See, I'm drawing a line in the sand because now you got to make up your mind what side of the line you're going to be on. You got to make up your mind what side of the line. Are you going to be on my side? Or you won't be on your own side, the world side. You got to make up your mind, and I come to bring division. Watch this. See, as we look at this, it's not a black and white issue. This is not, watch this, this is not a parent, child, or cousin, relative issue. Nor is it the believer in Christ issue. No, the issue is, watch this, what side of the line are you on? <laughs> The issue is, what have you chosen? What side of the line are you on? See, this is spiritual, not physical. This is spiritual issue. This is not a physical issue. As a Christian, you've been saved for a long time. You need to start seeing things in the spiritual realm. 
You need to stop looking at everything with the naked eye and the physical. If you've been walking with the Lord any amount of time, you should have spiritual discernment and understand where the attack is coming and get your head out of the sand and understand that we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and power and spiritual forces in the heavenlies. That's why I ain't looking at no person. See, me, I look beyond the person, and I'm looking at the entity that's making them do what they do. See, there's always a spiritual that makes you act up in the physical. Can I get a witness up in here? And the devil loves it because we keep looking at the physical that we are no longer looking at the spiritual. And the moment you stop looking at the spiritual, that's when the devil knocks your block off. See, I'm looking... I'm looking not at the physical, but I'm a spiritual being. So now, watch this. Now my focus is on the spiritual. Do I got any witnesses up in here? See, see, so the issue is this. The issue is what side are you on? See, watch this, watch this. Are you on the side that offers peace with God and the forgiveness of sin? Watch this. What side are you on? Are you on the side that offers peace with God, the forgiveness of God, the mercy of God, the love of God? What side are you on? Are you on the side that's headed to heaven? What side are you on? Or are you still on the other side that rejects God, offers of no peace, rejects the offer of his forgiveness? Amen? Are you on the side that you still remain an enemy of God? What side are you on? Look what Romans says. See, it's all about what side you're on. Look what Romans say very quickly. Romans, it tells us something. Look at what it says in Romans. And it says it in Romans 8, 7 through 8. See, Jesus says this. He tells of the consequences of his coming. What does Jesus say? Jesus says, I've come to divide. The line. Watch this. Nobody wants to receive this. I come to divide. You said, but you're device of Jesus. No, no, no. He's holy, he's righteous, he's just. And in, in, his, in his righteousness, there's a line that's drawn. Watch this. Listen to this. He says, the mind governed by the flesh, Romans 8, 7 through 8, is hostile to God. The mind that is still in this world, the mind that has never accepted Christ. Watch this. Get this, y'all. The mind that has never surrendered its will, its life to Jesus Christ. I ain't talking about talking about Jesus. No, I'm talking about you're broken on the inside, that you bow down to him. If not, watch this, you are still hostile to God. You may put up a facade, you may say his name, you may even quote a few scriptures, but if you have never repented, if you have never bowed down, if, he is not, if he's not Lord of your life and king of your life, guess what? You're still an enemy of God. Huh? Watch this. And it does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so, because those who are of the realm of the flesh cannot please God. See, the issue is what, what side of the line are you on? Watch this. Luke eleven twenty three. 23. Jesus says, whoever is not with me. This, watch this. Look, look, what, look what Jesus says. This ain't Pastor Webster. Look at the word. Jesus says, whoever is not with me is against me. Did you see that? This is spiritual. I don't care. I don't care about your, what, what, are you with me or not? Whoever does not gather with me watch this what what do they do they scatter mm, did you hear that here we go here we go so watch this jesus now does something listen brothers and sisters are you listening amen watch this the division caused by the cross here we go which is the death of christ and brings judgment, it is so deep that it even separates close family members. The offense of the cross, the cross even goes into one of the most strongest bonds of relationship on the earth, is even able to divide. Woo! Family members, 
You better wake up. Is this Bible? Look what he says in the context. Look at the context. He says, do you think that I came to bring peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but division. From now on, there will be five in one family. Oh, you better, what side you on? Divided against each other, three against two, two against three, they will be divided, father against son, son against father, mother against daughter, daughter against mother, mother-in-law, oh Lord, my mercy, mother-in-law, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. We don't want to hear this. See, we want the Jesus that we can make the Jesus how we want him. But Jesus says, watch this. You got to choose the line. And guess what the cross would do? It can cause a separation even in your own family. Woo! That's where some of the craziness comes in. Some of the chaos. You say, well, why is it coming? Because of the cross. Lord, have mercy. Did y'all see that? I'm teaching today. You ain't got to say nothing. I know I'm teaching this word. Amen. See, see, it's the cross. This is, this is a natural and this is a natural and spiritual conflict. Why? Because you got two distinct natures. Are you walking with me? That's in opposition with each other. Two distinct natures that are in conflict with each other. All because of the name of Jesus. May not be said, but that's the reality. The reality is all because of the cross, amen? And Jesus says it. Jesus is telling his disciples, look here, brothers. Y'all better wake up. Yeah, you, you name me, you're on my side. It comes with some stuff. The moment, watch this, you saved, you've given your life to me, it's going to come with some division. It's going to come with some separation because guess what? The moment you want to start living and being righteous and holy and the moment you're going to start revealing evilness and wickedness and the moment you stand on the wall against degradation, against sinfulness, the moment you start quoting who I am and you start living like I do, watch this, it's going to cause some people to get angry and separate from you. You better wake up, disciples. Huh? You better wake up, church members. Watch this. It's more than just a spiritual huddle. The moment you name the name of Christ, there's a hostility that takes place. Huh? Because a line has been drawn. Lord, have mercy. Huh? Don't, don't think it's strange. Huh? That's what Jesus says. Amen? See, the moment, watch this. See, we are, look, look, look. He says this, I draw a line because you got to choose me <laughs> over those ones that I allow you to bring into the earth. You got to choose me over any earthly relationship. I should be number one. And I'm going to tell you this right now. I'm a jealous God. I'm jealous. No, you love her more than you love me. You love him more than you love me. You love them more than you love me. No, no, sweetheart. I draw a line in the sand. No, no. No, I created all of you. <laughs> I agree, say jokers. <laughs> I draw a line in the sand. And I got to be number one. I got to be umo numo. I got to be boss hog. I got to be the man. I got to be the one sitting on the throne. And if you choose any earthly relationship over me, guess what? You're not now serving me. Lord, have mercy. Somebody cut the TV off. Here we go. Here we go. So watch this. Look what he says. He says the opposition will be there. Because, watch this, I'm almost done. Watch this. As we look at this, he says this, because you have chosen to be on my side. Anybody chose, have you chosen to be on the right side of the line? Yeah. 
Look what he says in Romans 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, in view of all that God has done in your life, how he saved you, delivered you, you're not going to hell. You're not going to be laying in no grave. You're not going to be, no, he's resurrected you, and he's allowed you one day to walk on streets of gold, and you're going to live forever because of the mercies of God. You're to offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, and this is your true and proper worship. You see what I'm saying? See, the moment that you want to start living for Christ, you compromise, you ain't got to worry about no conflict. You no longer want to be light and salt, you ain't got to worry about no conflict. You don't no longer want to have the mind of Christ and represent the kingdom of God. You ain't got to worry about no opposition. You go along just to get along, guess what? You ain't got to worry about no opposition. But the moment you say, nah, 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 look here, I love you, but this is what God say, it's going to cause some opposition. Watch this. So we got folks on one side. This is what Jesus says, I come to bring division. I come with a sword. Guess what? You better make a choice. No, no, this is real stuff. I come to bring judgment. You better decide what side of the line you're going to be on. You better make up your choice. If you know what I know, I'm going to be on Jesus' side. Watch this. And on those on the other side, the side of evil, worldliness, a side, watch this, that primary lives to satisfy earthly desires, a side that, 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 that even though it, it doesn't even want to think about submitting, surrendering to Christ. Matter of fact, when you talk about the cross, it represses, it rejects. Matter of fact, it begins, if you start talking about Jesus too much, it becomes offended. By the message of the cross. Don't even want to hang around that. Talk about foolishness all day. Talk about worldliness all day. Talk about all this other stuff all day. But the moment we start talking about the cross, hey, I don't want to hear about no cross. Huh? Yeah, I know it's true. Two natures are diametrically opposed to one another. That's why. That's why you got the conflict. Real quick, look what it says. I'm almost done. Watch this. Look what he says real quick. Whoever believes, John 3, 18 and 20, whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son. And this is it. This is it. I want y'all to grab this. Grab this rooted Bible. Grab the word. Watch this. This, this is the verdict. This is the verdict. Look what, look what he says. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light. That's the dividing line. A line of light and a line of darkness. You said, don't, don't talk about my baby like that. A line of dark and a line of light. Don't, don't talk about my uncle like that. A line of light and a line of dark. Don't talk about my boo like that. A line of light and a line of darkness. Huh? It's coming to the world, but people love darkness instead of light. Why? Because their deeds were evil. And everyone who does evil hates. Everyone who does, everyone on the other side of the line hates. Oh, oh but they go to church, hates. But they say his name, everyone hates. The light. And will not come into the light. For fear that their deeds will be exposed. Did you hear that? See, see the dividing line, I'm almost done, is that Jesus says this. He says, I didn't come for everybody to kumbaya because guess what? Everybody won't be able to kumbaya and come together. Why? Because of the cross. See, what the cross does, the cross is the dividing line. And, and the cross, watch this, it's a stumbling block to some. See, the expense, you got to ask yourself, watch this believer, you got to ask yourself, not at the expense, I, I, I love, watch this, I ain't telling you here that Jesus said you don't love your family, no, you love your family, no, Jesus ain't saying that, he's not putting that up there, no, you love your family, 
you, you, you be true, you try to do all that you can, you strive for, for, for the unity the best that you can, you cause no rifts, amen, you do all that you can, you be kind, you be gracious, you do all these things, but not at the expense of making Jesus second. Did you hear me? Not at the expense of making Jesus second in the family first. <laughs> no, 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 you don't understand. See, the family needs Jesus. See, our families can't do without the Lord. How do I know? Because it's the Lord who made families. The first institution is God's institution based on him. So the family needs God. The family needs a savior. Amen? And the family should be built on that. Are you walking with me? So watch this. We don't compromise Christ even for the sake of family. Can I get an amen? Y'all got quiet on me. Watch this. As we come down to the close, watch this. He says, shows us one more thing here, and that is the third misconception. Watch this. First misconception is that Jesus came to bring peace on the earth. That's a misconception. The second misconception, that everybody, we're going to be at peace with everybody. No, that's a misconception. Amen? Don't mean that you don't love everybody. Don't mean that you don't try to work with everybody. But watch this. We got to understand that there can still be a division because of the cross. Y'all walk with me today. But then the third misconception, and I'm done, is that, watch this, and this is how we're going to close. The third misconception is real. Look what he says here. The third misconception is that the hour is not urgent. And that man really don't need to make peace with God. See, the third misconception is I got time. I'm all right. The new word out, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good, preacher. I'm good. You know, with a little attitude to it. I'm good. See, watch this. The hour is not urgent to me. And, and in, in this season, I ain't got to make no peace. Matter of fact, people, they got to make peace with me. Isn't that the world now? Isn't that the movement of the world? They, they, they got to make peace with me. Jesus says, I'm on my way back. Watch this. The line is drawn. The hour is urgent. If y'all know anything and y'all been looking at the sign of time, have you noticed that people been leaving this earth a little bit more rapidly than five years ago? The hour is urgent. Christ is on his way back. Huh? And man got to make peace with God. Got to make peace with God. Look what Jesus says as we close this thing out. Look what he says in verses 54 and 59. Amen. Watch this. He says this as we come. He says, and he said to the crowd, when you see a cloud rising in the west, and immediately, watch this. Look what Jesus says. You say, it's going to rain. And it does. Watch this. And when the south wind blows, you say, it's going to be hot. And it is. Look what Jesus says, hypocrites. Did you see what Jesus? Y'all see Jesus of the Bible? This is Jesus of the Bible. Hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky. Let me, let me add, I'm an I'm a, I'm a isogee. I'm an isogee. This ain't in the text. You're able to take a space shuttle and send it up in the air? Put some people in it? Huh? You're able to do all this technology? Huh? You're able to do all these things? And you can't see the sign of the time? Huh? You're able to look and say, it's going to rain tomorrow, so I'm going to make plans that I'm not going to be able to do certain things because it's going to rain? I just made a tea time for me and Pastor Cliff Johnson. And the first thing that Pastor Cliff Johnson said, we come to PA, amen. First thing that Pastor Cliff Johnson said, is it going to rain? Look on the thing so that we can plan accordingly. Jesus says you can look at the weather and then you can make your adjustment. If you need a coat or if you don't need a coat, if you need sunglasses 
or you don't need sunglasses if you need a hat or you don't need a hat but you can't tell that I'm on my way back and that the son of man is coming back with all power and glory in his hand you mean to tell me that you are so smart that you're just that dumb that you can look outside and you can discern the weather but you so smart with your smart self but you can't tell that I'm on my way back you can't tell that there's already a staring going on in the earth you can't tell that the cosmos is starting to change you can't tell that the seasons are running into one another you can't tell that there's disease and pestilence and famine in the land you can't tell that there's chaos and mayhem and murder everywhere you can't tell that there's pride and selfishness all over the place you can't tell that the world is on its way in a downward spiral i stopped by to let you know a line is drawn in the sand and you better make up your mind what side of the line you are on are you on my side jesus says you better decide what side are you on give the lord a shout of praise Hey, I'm on my way back. I ain't got time for no foolishness, no craziness, no wickedness. The Son of God is on his way back. Give the Lord a shout of praise. And I come with a sword in my hand. You better make up your mind. You better make up your mind. What side are you going to be on? You better make a choice. Where are you going to be? What side are you on? Judgment is coming. The line has already been drawn. And let me say this to you. I don't care if you're in this church or not. Let me tell you this right now. Because you got people in the church unsaved. You got people in the church on their way to a burning hell. Judgment is coming. The line has been drawn. Please, please, I beg of you, choose quickly to get on Jesus' side. I beg of you, choose quickly to get on Jesus' side. You better make a choice. This is real. Get away from this foolishness and this craziness. You better make up your mind whose side you on. Whose side you on. Is there one here today? You say, today, I want to choose Jesus' side. I don't care about my past church history experiences. I don't care about how I was raised up in the church no no I bow today and I surrender my heart to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords I bow within the recesses of my being and I recognize I'm a sinner it's not my mama my daddy it's not society I'm gonna stop putting blame on everybody else I'm gonna take the responsibility for myself I am a sinner and I stand in need of a savior Lord save me right now deliver me right now I know that you're able to take all that crazy stuff in the past all that wickedness, all that stuff that nobody knew about, and I know you're able to place it under the blood of your son, Jesus Christ, and I ask you, all my mess, all my stuff, place it under the blood of Jesus Christ. 
so I can live forever. Time is running out, and I want to live forever. I want to see my mom. I want to see my daddy who's giving their life to you. I want to see my loved ones, but most importantly, I want to see the one who paid my sin debt, and that's Jesus, the son of the true and living God. Save me right now. Lord, save me. If that's you, watch this. If that's you, you humble yourself. And you raise your hand. If that's you, and you say, I just asked the Lord to put me on his side. I just asked the Lord to save me. I'm not going to ask you to come up front. If that's you in the sanctuary, raise your hand. And you say, Lord, I just accepted the Lord as my personal Savior. And I asked him to forgive me of all my sins. Jesus. Jesus. Forgive me, Lord, and be Lord of my life. If that's you, even at home, right where you are at home, fall on your knees and say, Lord, forgive me. Right where you are, Lord, cleanse me, be Lord of my life, and I accept you by faith. For by grace are we saved, through faith. That not of yourself, it's the gift of God. Not by works, lest any man should boast. Lord, right now, I accept you. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I believe you right now. He's able to save you. He's able to save you. I don't care where you come from. I don't care what you have done. He's able to save you. He's able to do it. You say, how you know, preacher? Because in 1988, he saved me. He saved me. He delivered me. He made a way for me. On that night, on that night, that I was up to no good. He delivered my soul. And he's able to do the same thing for you. Is there one? Just raise your hand. Just raise your hand. Hallelujah. And if that's at you at home, call that number on the screen. Ask the Lord that you tell somebody on that phone at the end that you've given your life to the Lord. Humble yourself. And the Lord will save you. Hallelujah. The line has been drawn rooted. Whose side you on? If you know, like I know, you better be on Jesus' side. May God bless you, and may heaven richly smile upon you. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us in service today. And as always, you can visit us on our website at www.rbfchurch.com, as well as subscribe to our YouTube channel. We hope you have a safe and prosperous week.